something I'm really passionate about is slow design, and I was so lucky to find a like-minded person here on YouTube. Her name is Talia. She has a channel over at Homeavore where she shares design and renovating her home as well. And we both connected on this theory of slow design and how we incorporate it into our lives and our home and our renovations. Something we thought that would be fun to do is ask each other questions about slow design. And so the first question today is, what is slow design to me? Slow design to me means designing intentionally, having an intention towards what you're designing a space or your whole home and being really conscious when you're purchasing pieces that are going in your space. What was my journey into slow design? My journey into slow design started around 2015 when I got really introduced to slow living as a whole. I was a busy new mom. I had a career that involved a lot of just a busy lifestyle. And so slow living led me to then um, minimalist and kind of clearing out my house. And I think when we cleared out our house, something that we did was every time something went out or we wanted to bring something back in, there was kind of this one, two ratio. So something, two things needed to go to bring something back. And I did that for a really long time. And then because you work so hard to kind of clear up this space, and our house was a thousand square feet. It was really valuable space. I feel like I became much more intentional what I brought back in. I really thought twice about, do I need that? Do I want it? Is it gonna last a long time? And so slow design, I think, was a concept maybe I didn't even know I was doing as early as then. But now I think when I buy things, I'm just very intentional that it's gonna last a lot longer. Even if it's an Ikea piece, I purchase stuff from Ikea all the time, which you can think of as being really temporary, but I think of it as like, how can this grow with us? Or is this actually what I want to buy? Or am I just going cheap on something or buying something because I don't want to wait for it? You know, there's a lot of factors going into it, but how I kind of came into that whole slow design lifestyle, I think was really through slow living and adapting it in every area. How has slow design manifested in my recent work? So my recent project is a renovation house that the original owners were here 46 years, the budget is small, and everything kind of needed to be touched and redone. But I came into it going, this is not a race, we're not flipping it, it doesn't need to be done in a certain amount of time. And so the first thing I did in this project was kind of walk in and see what I could save and what I could use and what I could keep. And I would say that has made the process slower than if you're gonna rip everything out. If you have the opportunity to rip everything out, although it rips all the character out, you can then match your tile to your walls, to your furnishings really easily. This I've had to be much more intentional. I have this old tiles to this home. They're 40 years old. They've been here um, since in the beginning when they designed it. And so I take these tiles with me everywhere to kind of coordinate with the new things I wanna freshen up. And that takes time and patience. And sometimes it's really enjoyable process and sometimes it's a little bit harder and I have to really pause and go, in the end, this is not only gonna save the budget, but I really like the outcome of having something that's been here a long time and has history and gives the house much more like depth to it. Is my partner on board with the concept of slow design? In the beginning, I think one of the things that, so the answer is yes, but in the beginning, I think one of the things that was, took a while to get used to was the fact that I have blank walls. And for a very long time, I've been somebody who has blank walls because I don't wanna just throw anything up there. I'm not very good at going to Target and buying picture frames and just putting them on the wall and calling it a day. I really like them to have like a purpose and a meaning to them, whether it's an artist that I know, um, a friend's photography, whatever it is. And so I think it, it once he kind of, my partner, my husband understood that, oh, okay, the, like this is part of the process. Like we're not gonna have anything on the walls in the living room for a while. And maybe that corner is gonna be empty for a little bit. He's really kind of learned the process. And I think he's really come on board with kind of how the whole thing plays out. And he's usually pretty happy with how it is in the end. Do I feel I need a large budget for slow design? Hmm, that's a tough question because yes and no. I think my style, I like well-made and I like something that is usually handcrafted and there is a little bit more of a cost to it. But on the flip side of that, I'm gonna go no because one of my favorite companies to work with is Ikea. 
I love the DIY kind of modular capabilities of their furniture. And over the years, I've been able to really adjust them to small space living and make it really fit in the home. So I don't always feel like slow design means you have to have a big budget. I feel like it means that you have to have patience. More than anything, I feel like you have to really pause and go, this room is not gonna be done. It's not gonna be magazine worthy or Instagram worthy right away. It's It needs a few months to kind of like meld itself out and you it takes a while to source things, whether it's vintage or handcrafted. Um, and if you're buying secondhand, a lot of times it takes a lot longer to find the specs and the dimensions that you need for your space. All right, and Talia, I have a question for you. So all these questions for, from Talia and she's gonna go answer them over on her channel the same way. I highly recommend you guys go over and check her out. But here's my question for you, Talia. How do you, or where do you source most of your slow design pieces for your home? I know for me personally, working on a project house where I know the final stage isn't quite there, we do need furniture to sit on, right? Like we need a sofa and we need a table to eat at, and maybe it's not gonna be the final table. And so for me, I've been using, I've been really leaning on consignment a lot. And whether that means I have to paint it or kind of get it maybe gently reupholstered, uh, those are kind of things that I'm DIYing for the interim until maybe I can save up for those big pieces I need. So I'd love to hear where you find most of your stuff. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something about slow design. If you already knew about it, leave me a comment below and let me know what kind of slow design means to you. And I look forward to seeing you back here on the next one.